I bowen to you all do epute we are in another session of grade 10 general science as per the sri lankan government school syllabus we are learning about the chapter number 15 for the second time transmission of pressure through liquids is what we are going to concentrate today in our previous lessons we put a recap of what is pressure and the pressure is a perpendicular force applied on a particular area and that equation also we got an explanation as it is expressed in the unit of pressure in newtons per square meter and then after that as a tribute of the french scientist blaise pascal this unit has been named as the pascal therefore newtons per square meter is becoming as one pascal lovely then we also found out it's a scalar quantity because it only got magnitude pressure hasn't got direction now and then we did some beautiful equation and we then after that found out what is the difference between hydrostatic pressure and the pressure hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that is inserted or exerted on the liquid and then we found out the vertical walls of the vessel will also experience the pressure apart from this there are many more characteristic of the pressure due to the liquids and we did this e experiment if you make some holes in the polythene bags what will happen and why it is happening and then we also found out this the pressure at the same level of a liquid is the same and also we found out this by doing the experiment the pressure in a liquid increases with the depth of the liquid didn't we found out that also now also we did some beautiful uh, sums and we solved some issues in said particular depth what is the pressure we found out with this equation lovely so it's time for us to get into the subject and uh, learn further shall we get into the subject okay There's a piston coming in front of you and it's going to give a pressure to that solid. And what happens to that solid when it is getting pressured? You see this one? Right. It, it got compressed, but liquids will not get compressed. Liquids do not get compressed by forces exerted on them. Therefore, the pressure exerted at one point in a liquid can be transmitted to another point in the liquid. So this physics truth, this physics truth is applied to many, many machineries. Look at this very, very carefully. One side of the piston is pressing the water level. And then this water level gone up. In, you can see that one once again. You see that one? Okay. In the animation, you found out a machine constructed to operate based on this physics principle is known as hydraulic press what is that hydraulic press now we're going to do some interesting sums and we want to find out the truth of this hydraulic press and how helpful it is in the physics application all right now 20 newton force is applied on one piston which is 10 cubic or 10 squared centimeter and the other side, 200 square centimeter piston is there. So they are finding, they are asking us to find out how it is getting 400 Newton of force. So it consists of liquid volume trapped by two pistons, A and B on either side of the cylindrical liquid column. Assume that the area of the piston A is this 10 square centimeter and the B is 200 square centimeter. Are you ready to understand? If a force of 20 Newton is applied on a piston A, the pressure it exerts on liquid is what? Right, let's understand. If that pressure, if that pressure here, for 10 squared centimeter, the pressure is 20. For 1 squared centimeter, the pressure will be 2 Newton, right? Okay. 
which is also applicable in this region also. But as it has 200, centi 200 squared centimeter, you can simply find out for 200 squared centimeter how much of force it can get. 2 multiplied by 200. Therefore, it is getting 400 newton force. This pressure is transmitted to piston B through the liquid. Therefore, the pressure at piston B is also 2 newton. That is right. That is, the fluid exerts a force of 2 newton vertically upward on each 1 squared centimeter of piston. Therefore, it is getting 400 newton. We understood it. Now, it's, it's clear, I hope. All right. Now, if it, it is possible to transmit, look at this beautiful thing over here. Only you are getting gi giving 200 Newton force over here. And how much of force you are getting as a result? 400 Newton. That's because of this liquid pressure. That's because of this liquid pressure transmission. It's possible to transmit a force of 400 Newton to the larger piston from the total force of 20 Newton acting on the smaller piston because it's possible to transmit what? Pressure through the liquid. That's a beautiful truth. That's why this kind of vehicle can be lifted very easily using this. So the hoist that lift vehicles in motor vehicle service stations are built based on the principle of pressure transmission through what? Fluids. Now, you can see this is what exactly happening over there. A smaller force is given to this region. Mm -hmm. And then after that, a heavier vehicle is being lifted using two piston as we saw in earlier example. And the pressure is given through this liquid. Now, the hydraulic jack also operates on the principle of pressure transmission like this. And also, another instance where the principles of liquid pressure transmission is applied is the brake system in vehicle. When you are applying the pedal like this, you see this one? The piston is working and it goes to the master cylinder and then the brake fluid is there. You see this one, brake fluid is working. And the brake fluid will give the pressure and it will stop a heavier vehicle with a smaller pedal through the sl slave cylinder transmitting the he much heavier force to the brake pads to hold the vehicle from moving once you are pressing the pedal of the brake. Lovely, isn't it? There's a question in front of you which is a very interesting question. It's asking, find the pressure exerted by a mercury column. Now, when they're asking about th that, you should always remember to apply this equation. Find the pressure exerted by a mercury column of height 10 cm. So that they have given a height which is 10 cm. You have to ultimately change this 1 cm into meter to find out the equation. So 10 cm will convert as meter. And you already know the P which is 13,600 density. And the gravity also 10. You know that. Now what are we going to do? We are going to apply 10 centimeter when we are writing as meter is becoming 10 divided by 100 and 13,600 multiplied by 10. Let's solve the issue now. 0, cut, cut, cut. All right. And 13,600 Pascal is the pressure in this equation. The pressure exerted by a mercury column of height 10 cm, which has a density of 13,600 kg, yes, per cubic meter, is 13,600 Pascal. The next question is, that's a very simple one. In the depth of a pond is 1.5 meter itself. Calculate the pressure caused by the water at the bottom of the pond. That we will apply also P right height density and gravity right 1.5 multiplied by 1000 multiplied by 10 in this scenario the answer will come as 15000 am i right i hope 
So, if you are solving this issue. Now, the next one is about the depth of at a certain point in a C. Wow, one kilometer. So, you have to convert that one into meter, one kilometer. It will be converted as a meter. Find the pressure exerted by seawater at the bottom of the sea at the point. Density of the seawater is given also. So the height you know and the density they have given and the gravity also you definitely know. So you want to find out the height in meter. So one kilometer is how many meters? Without any doubt it is thousand meters. Okay. Thousand meters and then after that the density is 1050 and the gravity is 1000 also. Let's solve it very small by small. 1000 and then I love solving issues. 5. Right. And let's solve it. Adding some 1, 2, 3. That says 10,500,000 Pascal is a huge pressure after one kilometer traveling down the sea, isn't it? It's a very huge pressure. So, you understood that also. Now, do you have another question? Of course, we have another question which is an interesting one. A tank with length of 5 meter with 3 meter and depth is 2 meter is filled with the liquid of density. They have given the density, they have given the height, they have given the length and the width also. First of all, what is the pressure at the bottom of the tank due to the liquid? They are telling that liquid has a density. So let's find out the pressure. You need the, you have the height. It is 2 meters. And the density is there, 800. And you know the gravity, it is 10. So you can find out the pressure over there, 1600. 16,000 Pascal. Voila. So, at the bottom, it is 16,000 Pascal. Now, that you got it. And the second one is, what is the force acting on the bottom of the tank due to the pressure? Now, you have to find out the force. You have to find out the force. We have the equation pressure force divided by the area. So, what we want to find out? You want to find out the force. We have the 16,000 pressure. Let me put that 5 multiplied by 3. That will be squared meter. Now, let's understand the force, right? In this, force will become 16,000 multiplied by 15. It's going to be Newton, definitely. Right, so are you ready to solve this one? The Newton comes around about, it's around about 240,000. So you got the answer for the first question and you got the answer for the second question also. The first question, it says 16,000. From there, we applied that and we found out 240,000 Newton. What is the force acting on the bottom of the tank due to the pressure? 240,000. Newton. So that's all and I'm going to meet you in another lesson to understand more about these. Until then, bye-bye. Take care of yourself.